first world order radio final lead final lead we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio we get on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. We got the show finally uh, working. I apologize for the technical difficulties. The show was supposed to start at 8 o'clock. But, um... There was a pre- previous show that was scheduled, and, you know, I'm just kind of new to this uh, blog talk thing. I'm not as adept as uh, Aleem, you know, but um, we're going to make it work. And it, it's only that way because I have, I have another show after this, so I want to make sure that I give you all all the information that I can give you because I appreciate everyone that showed up uh, here you know, in the room tonight, you know, that's much uh, uh, appreciated. And we're going to get into, you know, where we left off um, last week. So basically, um, you know, in this physical body, I am, you know, 19 years of age. So people will be like, oh, well, why, why are you going to take advice from a 19-year-old? How is he going to really say some shit that's going to... <laughs> really helped me if I'm so much older than him. It's all about experience, yo, and wisdom. And yeah, I'm I'm 19 and I have to play under the role that I'm 19 years of age. But according to readings, according to what I feel, according to to what I know, I have I have been on this planet, you know, plenty of times. And the goal is that most people on this show want to do it right this time so they don't have to come back. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to see if I can get my co-host on the line, if that's Brother L. Brother L, is that you on the air? Brother L? Let me Let me try it here again. That ain't me. That ain't me. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> okay, I do not know where Brother L is. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, basically what, I, what we're going to get into is um, basically the shaman 
So basically, from all the readings that that I did and um, had and was was able to have, I got more into my knowledge. You know what I'm saying? I got more into my understanding of self and what it what it was that I truly wanted. Uh, and it took a while, you know what I'm saying? Because at first I started out just straight one to be just straight one to be an MC. And you know, as as far as as high school, you know, I was there freshman year. And then I got out, and, uh, you know, just school wasn't working necessarily. It, it's not that I that I uh, wasn't good at it. I just didn't feel like I, it wasn't my interest. Like, it just wasn't my interest. I wasn't interested in any of these jobs out here, these retail jobs. I, I was like, I always felt, and you hear, like, when Bruce Lee says, like, I, ever since I was little, I always felt I had this mission, this this purpose, you know. So I started as as you know, just wanted to be an MC and and doing that. I still MC, but for the love of making hip hop, not to you know go go mainstream with it or anything. Um, so the more I got into my study, I began to understand and see these parallels. And just the more I looked into it, I I began to make um, it began to make more sense of me. I mean, when I was little, I couldn't have said, "Oh, you know, I want to go on the path of uh, medicine, man." I just I wasn't I even known this. I'm sure I knew my soul probably knew what it was, but I didn't necessarily know or you know. It's something that began to unfold. And if you read the book, um, Bringers of the Dawn, or you can even check out the clips on YouTube by Barbara Mansarinyak, I believe. She says in the book, she's the same woman that writes that DNA is light codes and activated through light codes and the sun. Um, But also what she says is this isn't, a lifetime where you're going to be taught new information, where you're going to be taught new things. This is a lifetime where you're going to remember who it was you are. This is a lifetime where you're going to remember who it is that you are. So, if you're not going to learn anything new, I mean, it may seem new, for a little bit, but it ain't nothing new under the sun, you know? So you ain't going to learn anything that that new. Uh, You're not going to learn anything that far off that you never learned before. And so it began to make sense, you know? And then (laughs) it was like, it was like, wow, I mean... What, what is it that I came here to do? I was like, okay, you know, I mean, I I, I love martial arts as, as a child. I got maybe to the blue belt or you know whatever. I loved martial arts. I loved uh, taekwondo, but I'm like, I love it. But there's a difference between loving it and saying I'm gonna dedicate my life to this. And I was just like, well, I understand that there was people there to do that. You know, Bruce Lee, uh, Yeet Man, um, Jackie Chan, you know, many others. You know, that's what their whole life was about, and they were trained, and, and, and that was it, what they were here to do. So ever since uh, I got introduced to the book Jewel in the Lotus uh, by Sanyata Saraswati, which is actually a grandmaster teacher of Aline, so Aline is my teacher, well, this is a lean teacher. So this is a grandmaster teacher. And he pretty much, his story was so inspiring that he went to Egypt. He went to uh, Tibet. He went to India. He went to all these places to cultivate 
and learn these ancient practices and dedicate himself to being a Kriya Bob or, or taking the Kriya path, which, you know, he makes it very – to all his students, I'm not, I've am not. i never been one of his students, but he's always clear on saying that uh, there's no shortcuts on the spiritual path. There's no shortcut, shortcuts on, on, on the spiritual path. Uh, that's what you did all day because back in the days we took the spiritual path very seriously. So it's taken very seriously. That's, that's what you do all day. That's what you, you know, eat, breathe, sleep, piss and shit and eat. You know, if I already said eat, yeah. That's, that's all you do. Your whole existence consists of this practice. You know, this is this is what you do. This is what you're here for. So I, I at first I was like, well, maybe I'll, you know, try the Kriya path and learn and, and learn Tantra and learn this. And I, I did learn a lot. And I did practice the techniques within the book. But then the more I got back into my study, I was like, hold up. You know what? Like, massage shit isn't working for me. You know, uh, the MC is, is working is working in the part that people enjoy my music. I mean, I make uh <laughs> I make music that um people in 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 2013 don't really know what the fuck it's saying, but old hip hop cats from, you know, Brooklyn and Queens and uh old old school hip hop cats, you know, enjoy my music. You know, I made it for them. <laughs> You know, um, but I was like, but but what? You know, cut all the bullshit, cut all the layers. What am I truly here for, yo? What did I come here for? Like, it's got to be something. Like, I didn't just come here to chill on the couch and and uh, and watch Pokemon. You know, I love that show. It was an awesome show, but that's not just. All I came here to do, you know what I'm saying? I came here to be inspired, no doubt. And then I just, so I got the readings. And the more I got these readings, it began began to make sense. I suggest everybody that feels that there is a path for them or a a true purpose, a, a calling like that, that you listen to that voice, you trust your gut feeling, your instincts, your intuition, and you go straight in that area. Don't question it. Get the Akashic Records reading. Get, um, you know, and find out, you know, what it is you're here to do. Now, I broke down in the last show that there is no true purpose for any human being on this planet. I broke that down in the last show. But what does that mean? There's no true purpose for any human being on the on this planet. What the fuck could, could he be talking about? Oh, well, the thing is, you know, there's no demiurge. There's no god or goddess that's going to tell you that if you don't take this path, like, shit is just going to go wrong for you or whatever. It's, it's not saying that, but it's saying if you look at astrology, Greek astrology, Vedic astrology, sidereal astrology, and you look it up and, and you line it up and you look at what have you really been attracted to in your life? What is it that you do naturally? What is your talents and your gifts? You begin to line up and you can look numerology, astrology, all the ology, even psychology. You know, you can take a Myers-Briggs test or personality test Find what work is perfect for you every way from physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, finding what is set, you know, in the stars for you. And that was my thing. And matter of fact, because I focused on it so much and because this is all what I always wanted to do, and I said, you know, I would never, once I found it, I would dedicate myself to that. And make that promise. Well, what what was I saying? Because I focused on it so much, 
you know, because you focus on something so much, you may miss out, you know, other things in that sense. Because I focused on it so much, I missed. It, 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 it was something more subtle than something expecting something so big. It was big, but it started out subtle. It started out small, small, and then holy shit, oh, this is what I'm here to do. Oh, okay, like that makes so much sense. And I get it now, and like word like this is this is my life this is what i want to do with with uh with my life now the thing about it when you truly receive that moment and i'm sure a lot of you have but when you truly receive that moment is is seriously seriously something that at first it, it seems unreal at first it seems like I don't know. I mean, you know, somebody could have just made this up. But when it's like, no, like it's it's completely coming out of your heart and you're like, I couldn't really see myself doing anything else. I couldn't really see myself. I mean, I, I can learn other things, but I could, I could see as, as in my true work uh, that this is my true work. Now, if you check out, you know, all these systems, you know, all, all all these white boys, but they did, some of them did lay the groundwork, you know what I'm saying, for the gods and goddesses to walk on. And if you if you look at it, um, some of the, you know, that learned the ancient mystery schools, which, of course, you know, you, you um, a lot of it, um, you know, started with uh, Pascal, Beverly uh, Randolph, but when you find it, everybody seems to be talking about this great work. This is what I think of whenever I hear Brother Panic or I hear, you know, uh, Aleem or whoever saying, you're doing the work, you're doing the work, you're focused on the work. The occultists, or mainly in the Golden Dawn and a couple others, uh, systems, schools of thought have this called the great work. And the whole philosophy of do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Now, you don't even got to agree with anything Crowley said, because Crowley didn't even say that. It was a messenger from uh, Horus, a, a minister from Horpokrat, or Horus, uh, Heru, that gave him the message, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Well, what does it truly mean? Because some people will be like, oh, that means that I can... I can, uh, you know what I'm saying, I can fuck around, I can I can smoke weed, I can do whatever I want without any consequences. And that is the silliest interpretation of that meaning. What it means is what the stars lined up as, what is your true will, you know, I mean, in, in, in somewhere in, in one of the prayers is like, you know, let the Lord's will be my will. Your will, your true purpose, your intention, your purpose is your true will. Now, you focusing on that true will and your true purpose is the great work. You're dedicating it to the great work. You're dedicating it to your ancestors. And a lot of this, sometimes your great purpose comes from work that you possibly incarnated into a family Um because it has something to do with the bloodline of the lineage. And if it has to do with with the bloodline of the lineage, then you know, oh, okay, so I'm here for a purpose. I'm maybe with this particular family member for a purpose. And, of course, I mean, you know what I'm saying, we all love our family, hopefully. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I incarnated into this particular lineage like with Sunyata Saraswati. He had a lineage that went back to, and, and actually as a child he met uh, Parahamsa, Parahamsa, I think, Yogananda, you know, one of the ascended masters, one of the, um, you know, uh, yogis. Um, and that, 
going back to Baba G, and, and they have this whole thing called the Cobra bat, Breath, and it's passed on through lineage, and it's not revealed to anybody except those who have learned it, you know, from the lineage, and then it's passed on from the master to the student. So, he was born, you know, he incarnated because that's what he wanted to learn. That was his, his mythology, that was his prophecy. I was I won't say mythology because I mean it happened. That was his history and mm-hmm. that's what happened. And that's that's his story. You know, that's the truth. So if he incarnated in that particular lifetime, you know, for that purpose, you know, that's what that's you know, what he's here to do. And when when you receive that moment, see when Brother Panic and and a lot of these um, other great uh, great um, metaphysicians and occultists um, talk about receiving light, these are through realizations. One of your greatest realizations is like, holy shit, this is what I'm here to do. Holy shit. You become Neo. You're from the Matrix. Once you begin to believe, and part of that believing when Morpheus is like, he's beginning to believe. You know, he's like, what, you, what is he doing? He's beginning to believe. It's because, like, because the whole the whole concept of the movie was built upon knowing thyself. So Neo started out thinking that he was just a regular Joe in the Matrix. Blah, blah, you know how the story goes. Amazing movie. Talked about, you know, um, he takes the uh, red pill, gets in the Matrix. It's hard for him to believe it at first. It's really hard for him to believe it at first. In fact, he's like, let me out, let me out. You know, he starts spazzing out and like, get off of me, you know. Starts spazzing out and then he and then he pukes. It's that hard for him to believe it. He doesn't believe it. Then what does he ask? When he asks Trinity, Neo, Trinity, see the names here and the symbolism here? The Trinity, part of the prophecy, was asking, you know, um, you know, all this happened. Does it mean, you know, none of it was real? What does that mean? That the Matrix cannot tell you who you are, Neo. So a holographic reality cannot tell you who you are. I mean, you go asking all these people, you know what I'm saying? You ask 100 people, you know, somebody is always going to be a hater for some, you know, for for balance or or for for whatever reason. You show maybe the greatest MC, there's going to be so many critics. No matter if it's the greatest album. Some people still say, you know what I'm saying? They um this could be a great song. This this could be a, a an amazing song. It could be from Marvin Gaye, but somebody from the twentieth century is like, Who the fuck is Marvin Gaye? And you'd be like, Oh hell no, he didn't just say that shit about Marvin Gaye but he, you know, he's so in his own he doesn't even know what that is, or he doesn't know. It's not even that he doesn't know, or she doesn't know what that is. It's just it's not from her era or his era. It, it's something that you know they just don't understand the music or whatever. They're not feeling it for some reason. Which you know I love Marvin Gaye. I mean I mean who doesn't? You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying. There's there's haters. So the Matrix can't tell you who you are because a million people are going to say, you know, they love this song, and you'll get usually a smaller percentage, sometimes a a half percentage that doesn't like them or her. So that's the Matrix. You're trying to get the masses to tell you who you are? That's like asking everybody. You know what I'm saying? On the street or whatever. Being like, yeah, do you think I'm a good person? You ask a crackhead and be like, yeah, do you think I'm a good person? You know, he doesn't really know you, but he just nods his head. 
you know. <laughs> you're as a homeless person. You think I'm a good person? Yeah, yeah, I think you're a good person, yeah. yeah this could be the most uh, vile, villain type of person, but just because they, you ask them and they tell you what they want to hear or, or whatever, you know, that's like you asking the masses to tell you who you are. Now, you can ask your friends. You can ask people that can act as mirrors of your subconscious mind. You can ask people that you actually know if you feel lost and you can't find it with. The goal is to find it within yourself. But if you can't find it within yourself, sometimes we all need reassurance. Sometimes we need confirmation to be like, you know, I mean, am I am I really that good of a... Uh, you know, uh, a teacher, uh, a practitioner. Am I? Am I really that good? Oh yeah, I've known you your whole life. This is what you've always been about. This is you. And then you like, and they act as a mirror. And then you get that information. And you're like, oh okay. Well, thanks for being my mirror today. You know. So the matrix cannot tell you who you are. So who can tell you who you are? Your reflection. Yourself, your friends, your, you can just see it. Your subconscious mind already knows what it is. You know, this has been told to you over and over. But your conscious mind is, kind. Of, your conscious mind knows what it is, sort of. But it's like, I'm just going to make shit a little bit harder for you until you find it yourself until the information truly penetrates into the form where you say if it comes to a point where you don't even got to say that's what you are because it's in your subconscious is what you already know that's what you are that's what you do people come to you naturally because of it then that's when you truly are whatever you say you are you know you were shining the star but you get my point so the Matrix can't tell you who you are. Mr. Anderson damn well can't tell you who you are. Because what Mr. Anderson, well, the funny thing is Mr. Anderson knows who you are. But he, because he knows who you are and because he knows how great of a potential that you have, Mr. Anderson is be like, yeah, I know who you are. And my purpose on this planet is to make shit hard for you. To stop the journey of the hero. But Mr. Anderson is really just a reflection of your own mentality in the opposite way. So the Matrix can't tell you who you are. Your friends, people who you know, can truly mirror it to you. But it's when you take that initiative and you say, you know, who am I? You know, there was a good movie called um, Who Am I? <laughs> with Jackie Chan in it. And this whole thing is, he used to be this uh, this guy, this under this detective, I forgot what he was, a policeman, I, I forgot what he was, a, a detective or something. And uh, he hit his head, and he forgot who he was. And that amnesia, he forgot who he was. He had no idea what he was doing. He didn't know. But who he truly was was in his subconscious mind. And he would kind of have flashbacks of it. But he he didn't know. And, you know, further on in the movie, he begins to, I mean, he begins to ask. The first thing he does is ask, which is your first step. Who am I? What's my purpose? What's my career path? Who am I? You know. Because I know I should, sure as hell, did not come here to do no janitorial job. I know I didn't come here <laughs> to, to to wipe old people's asses. You know, what what did I come here to do? That's important. So when we begin to truly realize that, and that true realization is when you know. 
And when that information penetrates to the point where it's what you know and not necessarily what you have to say or speak about it or think about it or talk about it, then that is your true, you know it. You just know. You know, um, this is Carl, uh, Carl Jung, uh, who who actually um, worked with Sigmund Freud, and um, he he went on on the esoteric path. He wanted to use divination. He wanted to use um, he wanted to bring occultism into psychology to show people why uh, he thought uh, different um, patients had mental uh, disorders or disabilities, or why he thought they were this way, and. Carl Jung, I remember in this interview, to say, uh, do you believe in God? And Carl Jung would be like, I do not need to believe. I know. I do not need to believe. I know. <laughs> so it's no. It's no less self. It, and this whole thing, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've heard it over and over. It's too, too hermetic, hermetic path. There's one who knows thyself. But, like many understand, everybody that walks this path understands, you know, it's not a one-point stop. You know, it's a continuing of of knowing thyself. You know, they say, you know, I mean, if, if you don't use this muscle uh, too long, you know, it is harder for it to work. It's not as great as it used to be. So you train in that muscle of, of, of knowledge and, and knowing yourself. So the more and more you practice that, the more and more it's revealed to you, the more and more until it, it, it becomes a given, and then it's what you know. That goes for anyone on a mystical path, you know. You know, a shaman, uh, a seer, an oracle, gypsies, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, um, Clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, clairgessians, claircognizant, you know, just whatever it is that you are. This is to help on any of those paths. Preferably somebody on a more mystical path. Because that is where the true realization truly matters. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can have knowledge of self. You can know thyself, you know what I'm saying, and still work in the office. I'm not saying that, but it's where you have truly no distractions. Like the Native Americans have what is called a vision quest. And the purpose of the seeker is to spend all this time, you know, out in nature, out in the woods, out in the forest, or wherever, out in nature, and have a vision. This vision brings knowledge that they can take from from the other side. Um, it brings information, knowledge that they can do, uh, that they can use from the God realm. The God realm. They're bringing it from the ethers. Bringing this information whether they're getting it from the Akashic Library or Source or, uh, you know, um, the Collective Unconscious, whatever you want to call it, they're getting this information, bringing it to you, and it's useful in this day and time. So why do I feel, um, not only because I'm dedicating myself to the study, and I feel that this is it, this is what I want to be, this is what I want to do with my life. You know what I'm saying? Then why why is Aleem stress that it's important to be able to cite particular herbs and to know these things, to know nature, to get in tune with nature? Because I've learned something, and, and I can't describe it in any other way. Nobody can really say, I can't say necessarily, that this particular spirit necessarily told me this, this told me this, and so and so told me that. The best way I can describe it, whatever you want to call 
Gaia, Mute Nature, you know, Mother Nature, Mother, uh, you know, the nature showed to me that if you treated it with respect, if you are on that path and you treat it with respect and you admire and you acknowledge the spirit within the trees, and, you know, I mean, it's not always, you know, simple when you're coming from the matrix and then you're like, oh, but I'm trying to be so gentle and delicate towards the trees and the plants. And, you know, it's just like, <laughs> and, you, and, you know, you pollute in the airways in the car, you know. So, I mean, so when you have that respect. Now, and this is very in shamanism, but since shamanism is, as almost as old as the planet is, so is what it was called animism. Uh, animism, which you get animation, cartoons, anime, um, you know, anim- a- animism, which is making something, you know, realizing spirit and everything. There's spirit in the water. There's spirit in the house. There's a spirit in the trees. There's a spirit in the animals. There's a spirit in you. There's a spirit in the food. Recognizing the divine essence and spark within everything that has life. Or if it doesn't have life, you breathe in it life. That's animism. But it is also very close to shamanism. Now, I'm a beginner on this path. You know, I lean as a shaman, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? He's worked on it. You know, I'm I'm I consider it, you know, as as long as we've been kicking it together and building together, um that, you know, he's taught me, you know, so much. You know, I, I can't necessarily get into, you know, necessarily uh you know, I mean I guess I can but it's area. You know, I mean, Aleem is more so, you know, and Brother L and, and there's others, you know, that is good with the law and it is necessary. I understand what it's for. But my depth area, I feel, so far is metaphysics, the occult, mysticism, all that. That's that's just that's just who I am. You know, I can't I can't put it in any other way. I'm not saying that I wouldn't be good at law. I mean, you know, but I'm just saying that and I know why why Aleem, why Aleem does it, and I know why he, I know how um, I know why he's he's so good at it, and I understand his place, and that it is very necessary um, for somebody to know the law. It's just not necessarily my adept field, but what I can do is, you know, this this right here, occultism, mysticism esoteric teachings, wisdom, you know, the teachings of the light, her Bach, whatever you want to call it. This is this is this is where I belong. You know. And a shaman. I can actually look in my notes, give you a a logical and a, a definition. A medicine man is a priestly hearer or sorcerer, especially among the American Indians. Shaman. So, but one definition isn't going to cut it for a truly thing, for a true thing. You won't look at one definition and be like, yeah, you know, I followed my whole life according to one definition, and that one definition did for me, and it was like reading a fortune cookie, the same damn fortune cookie every day, and you know, yeah. You know, it's not going to be like that. One definition isn't going to do it for you, but it will give you a logical explanation of what it is that you're doing. Shaman, a language of Siberia. Shaman, a priest or priestess who uses magic, you know, so he must be a magi, to cure the sick, to divine the hidden, and to control events. But you really look at it more and more, you begin to understand, wow, these 
definitions and these titles really have nothing compared to what the shaman can truly do. Because the shaman was adept to pretty much everything spiritual in, in, in spirit nature because that, that's, what he, that's what he did. A shaman could still be a Sufi, a mystic. I mean, it, the, the term seems so vague, but yet if you truly understand, instead of trying to put a definition on it, of what it is, it's a priest of light. It's a priest of of uh, knowledge. It's a priest of, of wisdom, of metaphysics. It's, a, it's an occultist. It's, it's all that. But the interesting thing is a lot of these deities that people, you know, pray to or give the energy to or let rule their life, a lot of them were created by... <laughs> Can you guess who? Shaman. A lot of them were created by shaman. Whether it's in the Yoruba tradition, whether it's in Ifa, whether it's in uh you know, in in, in the Mayan traditions, a lot of these deities were created by shaman. So they were created by this particular person. Now you can see why this person is known for that title, known to be the medicine man. Not just because he looks on a wheel and he listens to the people that, you know, the old people with long hair and beards, you know. Not just because he listens to his elders, but what this person can naturally do can heal people, can take sickness from a person and somehow accidentally, yeah, uh, you know, not can pick it up, can transfer it and um, heal the person, can divine, is in touch with the divine, knows a divination, able to see things before they come. You know, that's a shaman, you know, a healer, get in touch with the plants. I tell you, yo, like now, like before, like I was just like, you know, I mean, I, I want these particular herbs so I can, you know, maybe work on going into altered states of consciousness and I can use it to heal and this and this. No. Now that I understand, I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying? These plants are so important. I understand what it means to be a green man. I understand what it, what people will say, you're a tree-hugging hippie. I understand what people are saying where you, you, you just went gone green. No, you literally gone green because I'm saying no. Nah. Like before, you know, when I, I was younger, maybe a couple years younger, I didn't understand it. Now I will want to go out there and play music for the plants. You know what I'm saying? Play music for the plants and the trees. As long as there's not that many damn mosquitoes out there, because you know what I mean? Nobody wants that. You know? um, but um, to play music for the plants and the trees and listen for, 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 the, for what they're trying to tell you, you know, I think uh, Brother Azazel broke it down on one of these shows. You know, we call ourselves gods. You know, I mean, the trees have been there, you know, longer, way, way longer than any the human beings. So it's not necessarily saying that they are more intelligent, but they have to have wisdom. They have to be have some form of intelligence. They've been there longer than your great-great-great-great-grandpa, grandma. They've been there a long time, so you know. You know, wise people, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I think uh, my dad or, or my mom used to tell me is, you know, listen to me. I've been here a long time. I've been on the planet a long time, you know. But the trees, they how long they've been around. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying... 
just find a particular tree or plant and study it, but try to listen, try to try to nurture it. See, there's these people, I don't know where necessarily they're from, is it India or, or something, and you, like, step on their dirt or something, or you talk shit about their dirt or something, they will cry. They will cry. They will cry. They will get angry. They will probably get an angry mob on you. (laughs) Because they understand how valuable and the love and the nurture that this dirt and what it is and what and how it's able to grow. You know, I I mean, you look it up and you find in in Egypt and a lot of uh, magic started with um, trying to get crops to grow. We think, well, shit, like, why why would I waste my magic on trying to get crops to grow? I mean, shit, like, you know, like I could I could have a fancy car. I could use it to manifest this. I could get a sexy lady. You know, no, 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 no. Hold up. Any of that shit ain't gonna happen if you don't have crops. And you know, you don't. You know, this is this is your food for the year. So, you know, that's what the crops are for. That's what the crops are are for. So they they praise this dirt. And not in the sense that they worship it, but they just realize and have a respect for nature and what nature has to offer. And if you truly, now this is truly getting in, too, getting in touch with Muhar and that hair. This is truly getting in touch with her. It's not just, you know what I'm saying, just wearing green for a day and saying, oh, I feel like my heart chakra is vibrating today on such a high level. It's not saying, oh, you know, <laughs> my my kundalini feels so fancy today. It, 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 it's not not that. That will happen, but not in, in that sense. When you truly have respect for the trees, for spirits and ancestors, you know, particularly, you know, the, the right ones who, um, you know what I'm saying, were... Uh, you know, um, you know, uh, beings of good intention. Um, when you truly show respect, you get blessed back. But not just blessed, you truly feel it in the heart, this connection, this compassion, this thing that just like, holy shit, you know, I mean, there's an intelligent being that is like me, that is listening, and wants to help. It wants to feel appreciated. It's not anything to do with religion or anything like that. It's simply connecting with the energy and that which is on planet Earth and understands what you've gone through, what you've been through, understands your mentality, understands how humans can be, They've been there before It's like ancestors But trees Plants You know what I'm saying So The Egyptians and I'm sure many other um, Civilizations Or ancient civilizations Recognize the divinity Within The water you know, the trees, and that there is a spirit in each of these. Now, I want to give a shout-out because today, um, you know, once again, I apologize for the show starting off uh, late. It, I was just really just trying to play a song, and it was showing, like, the show hadn't started, and I was like, oh, we're on the air, where the hell, <laughs> you know, where's Brother L at, you know, but, you know, um, you know, but it's all good. You know, the God's doing what he does. You know, um, Aleem and his wife is, is doing is doing their thing up in New York. And they trust me and they have, you know, uh, you know, the amount of respect for me to host the show. 
And, you know, I'm like, yeah, you know, definitely. As much as they taught me, it's it's in appreciation and uh, respect, you know, to to do a show um, like this for them. But what I wanted to say is today um, a particular friend of mine, uh, her name was Ashley Bilisano, and she was a, a, a wonderful, you know, beautiful girl, you know what I'm saying? Um, and based on the way um, that she grew up, uh, not not just really grew up, just the way um, that she was treated in her family and such, and I had no idea about it, but it was too much um, psychological abuse or, you know, any human to really, um, you know, really try to, without mad psychological help, as much as I know about psychology, um, in dire need of psychological help. Too much for, you know, one human being to to take on, you know. So, so she passed on. She made her transition around, um, you know, around November 2011. But the thing about that is not this, you know, I mean, it's been, it's been like two years and, uh, I've met her in the dreams and I, I've, I've seen, you know, where she's at, you know, this beautiful, uh, place. I'm not sure it's the astral world. I'm not sure where it was. Um, I'm not sure if she's reincarnated in another body or if she gets if she gets to go to high, the higher orders. I am not sure, but what I'm saying is that I just want to give a shout out to her. You know, I I dedicated this day to her, made her food and everything, put it on her altar, and uh, yo, if you're gonna offer somebody some food, yo, don't make this food when you're hungry. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I didn't necessarily know, and I thought that you would put it on the altar for maybe just a little bit, and then, you know, maybe you could eat it. And that is like somebody offering you a brownie, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and putting it on on your plate and then picking it back up and start munching on it and be like, mm, this brownie is pretty good. Like, Yo, well, why did you put it on the plate <laughs> if you were going to pick it back up and eat it? <laughs> um, so, you know, but I just want to give a shout out to her. Her name is uh, Ashley uh, Bilsano. She was a good friend of mine. You know what I'm saying? Um, she always believed in me and, and, and thought I was uh, uh, a good hip hopper, you know, back in the time where where people were saying that I, I sucked or whatever, that I had no, uh, you know, hip-hop ability, whatever, you know what I'm saying? She believed in me, and I, and I took that shit, and and people just listen, listen to my music now. I say this humbly. I say this humbly. You know, I, I, I hip-hop has always, you know, been in my heart. Um, you know, I, I say I've been working at it for five years, five and a half years now. All the time I was in high school is all I dedicated really myself to. But she was somebody that believed in me. And, you know, if you really put in work, you will go to the next level. So I want to give a shout out to her. You know what I'm saying? Um, drink some wines. Drink some, uh, some, you know, liquor, you know, whatever it is. You know, drink some, you know, some of her, um, you know, beautiful, wonderful spirit. And, you know, may she, you know, rise in power, you know. Um, but anyways, of course, when you do that, you know that you help out your an- your ancestors. Um, but you help out friends that are passed on. You help them out. And, you know, I mean, they are on a better possibly, a, you know, a better level of existence so they can help you out in ways that you can't even conceive yet, you know. You help them. You 
rise them to the next level. You let them you show them how to transform them into something beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's the truth. Um, I really want to say, of course, of course, in the other shows, and everybody should know right now, the, the pineal gland is is the prime gland for your spiritual revelation. The pineal gland, specifically in the pituitary gland. So what shamans would do would meditate, go into caves for some time. You know what I'm saying? This is what shamans do. I'm not talking about cavemen. I'm not talking about men who created iron wheels and little bicycles and shit like that. I'm saying shamans would go into caves and, you know, they would either call it meditating or they would sit in there for some time. And it would alter their state of consciousness, being in darkness for so long. Well, the pineal gland seems to light up in darkness. It seems to truly turn on in darkness. And you have similar to DMT experiences. You know, it's true hallucinogen, but is produced naturally within your pineal gland. You know, um, in the previous shows, where the panic has broken down, um, a lot of that, but what I would say for one that is that's interested in having these experiences is just meditate in pure darkness and truly take a light this. Focus on your breath, relaxing your breath, um, as in, you know, take deep breaths as you, because this alters your state as you go deeper and deeper into consciousness. And you can use this with the panic pack or whatever. When you're in that deep state, confront what Carl Jung would call the shadow self. Confront it. Instead of running away from it, instead of uh, being like, be gone, dark side. Or instead of being like, you know, come to the dark side. Instead, just just make friends with it. Try to understand where it's coming from. Really get to the root of where it's coming from. And see where it originated from. And then try to, make, you know, make peace with it. In a sense, because if this came from your own subconscious mind... All things originate from from the source, from the one light. All things originate and came from there. So try to think of where it could have come from. You know, I mean, it's like a little kid that, you know what I'm saying, he, he, uh, maybe at one time he was, he was making, uh, Legos or something, and then some kid just decided to just break, you know, destroy his Legos, and then he learns this behavior from seeing others do it, and then he thinks it's normal and it's cool and it's cute (laughs) to go and destroy other people's Legos. So to think about it, this was a pure, born, innocent kid. You know, what was wrong? Oh, no, he just learned something, and he didn't necessarily understand what he was doing. He just saw others do it observation and he learned. Same with your with your shadow selves. You can look like, you know, I was this good person. I really had the intention of uplifting, you know, all of the beings and being the, the best person that I could. But, you know, in, in, in the spiritual sense, I, I worked at it. I, you know, where did I learn this mentality from. And so instead of trying to destroy it 
and be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're going down, Darth Vader, you know, <laughs> or, you know, Chance of Palpatine or, or whatever. You know, we can talk about Star Wars all day. Um, but what I'm saying is now I'm making peace with it, just being like, you know what? Uh, I understand that I created you and I learned that through, uh, you know, through mistakes and I learned and you learned the, and I somehow influenced you to learn these different personalities and these certain things and you didn't do anything wrong. It's just there may be a better way for you to do it. I'm not mad at you. I ain't got anything against you. This is not a, a, a duel versus light and dark. This, this has nothing to do with it. It's simply saying I accept you as who you are. And I understand where it originates from. So I have the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding. I understand where it originates from. And I'm saying, you know what? Let's make peace with it. You know what I'm saying? Because instead of having an opposition towards a demon or or, uh, or 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 Mr. Anderson and say angels are better than demons, this is better than that, you know, coming to peace with it, being the bigger person, saying, you know what, it's, it's all good. I'm coming to peace with it. I accept. I know that you originated from the source. And what I'm going to do is say, you know, I respect you, You're, even if you may be a shadow self, you may be one of the deepest, darkest fears, but I'm going to say, you know, peace, I love you, it's, it's all good, I accept you. And then that darkness turns into light because it was never dark in the first place. Dark is only what you do not know. The darkness that all these people seem to claim to be claim to be light workers and they work with light. And they don't they still don't even even know how fucking magnets work. <laughs> how to get how to get you know, plug get batteries into series. Light workers. They work with lights. And electronics. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. But what I'm challenging is don't necessarily don't be a, a, a light worker, don't be a, a dark worker. Be a day and night worker. Meaning, you the two become the same. Because what you realize that all this darkness was originally came from light. And when I say light, I'm not talking about light and the source of good. Light is just the spark of creation, the Big Bang, whatever you want to call it. The manifestation, uh, you know, the quark, quantum physics. Um, that's light. The knowledge, you know. And so when you understand that, and you understand, of course, that, I mean, shit, there, there really is no good or evil. These are religious concepts. So when you realize that, it became, it becomes down to interpretation. So do you worship polarity? Oh, because he said he's a light worker. Then I should be a dark worker. And then when we come together, we're going to constantly butt heads, even though we're part of the same thing. See how foolish that sounds? That's humanity. You know what I'm saying? That's humanity. Oh, he's, oh, oh he claims to be a shaman. He, he, he claims to be a scientist. And we both trying to figure out how shit works. Oh, he's an oracle. He tries to divine the He tries to divine. Well, when you flip your Bible open and you try to find a verse to comfort you today, is that not divination? Tell me. Tell me. We all come from the same source. 
all these goddamn religions and all these different types of things, monotheistic belief systems, you're fighting, thinking that they are the are, are, are the correct answer and they know it all? No, it all comes from one source. Everything but one light. Even the thought form. So, I mean, it really comes down to that and figure out and say, you know what? Yeah, the hell with this. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be the day and night worker. I mean, I work day and night. I work day and night. Not just my nine to five, whatever. I'm constantly at work for my spiritual growth. Because I know that's what a shaman is. That's what a mystic is. That's what a, a magi is. That's what a scientist is. We don't have preconceived notions. We start with an open mind and we see what happens. That is the mind of a scientist. That is the mind of a shaman. That is the mind of a magi. We start with an open mind and then we say we see what happens. You know? We start with an open mind, right? And then we see what happens. That's it right there. And then based off what you've seen, what happens, then you can make the judgment for yourself and see, you know, what it is. But I appreciate y'all coming out so much. I apologize for the show starting just a little bit late. It just had some technical difficulties. But, y'all, we kicking it. You know what I'm saying? All is peace, peace and love to Brother Aleem and the goddess. Kadera, you know what I'm saying? My name is Mike Pratt, aspiring to be the shaman. Close for all the radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories, shit that works. 